good afternoon viewers of the live telecast of santan from baisak today's program is focused on creating awareness on research opportunities in collaboration with space application center amdavad the target group for today's program is the faculty and students from all government engineering colleges and polytechnics under commissionate of technical education the most objective of all technical education is to impart quality uh, education through well defined curriculum as per the norms of nba apart from regular teaching one has to have one has to focus on research component also so as to enhance the standards of the institution at par with national institutions as you all know in commissioner of technical education we have various parameters to assess the technical education the parameters such as academic performance index uh, index that is api then key uh, project indicator that is uh, key performance indicator kpi students feedback creating of center of excellence and accreditation of various programs are really required to improve the quality of the institution as per the norms of nba to have a state of art laboratories one has to seek assistance from various government agencies today we have with us in the studio the eminent scientist from space application center amdavad dr nilesh desai is the chairman of respond review committee and is also group director of isro dr pk sivatsav group director ppg and research areas of sac the third speaker is dr vikas patel head rpcd rules and procedure for respond and the last speaker is ms minal sampath the the main uh, focus on this today's lecture is the sponsored research projects from sac and as you all know as a proverb goes make hay while the while the sun shines i request all the institutions to listen to this program uh, carefully and take the critical views from all the speakers and try to establish center of excellence laboratories in all your institutions over to the first speaker mr nilesh desai he has an experience of more than 27 years at spa space application center amdavad he is presently the group director of microwave sensors digital electronics group msdg of sac isro amdavad i guiding various projects for students also and in isro he is guiding the project teams of chandrayaan 2 orbiter and lander and other space missions he has been the main author and co-author of more than 120 technical papers he has been awarded isro's annual merit award for the year 2010 over to dr nilesh desa thank you madam usha nilkanthan <coughs> and uh, good afternoon to all the participants under this commissionate of technical education and uh, from the participants from various colleges engineering colleges as well as polytechnic colleges uh, a very good welcome to all of you and today i'll be covering we'll start this interest exploration seminar as we call it so that we can give you the overview of the research uh, collaborative activities which can be carried out along with a space application center so as madam had already briefed all of you about the plan which we have chalked out for today's seminar so we'll start with this first uh, session related to the overview of space application center and isro activities so that you get a feel of what the activities which we have been carried out carrying out in space application center situated in amdavad so i'll be covering the sec isro activities which we have been doing in last uh, 25 30 years Uh, under this seminar next so my presentation will cover uh, a brief about indian space research organization uh, what is the role of space application center within this uh, umbrella of this space applic uh, organization of indian space research organization and what activities which we are carrying out related to satellite communication which is one of the major activity which affects the society basically what we are trying to convey is how we are utilizing space and harnessing its capabilities for the service of society that is the main aim apart from that what science we are doing which gives you an opportunity to have various 
proposals, research proposals or uh, other technology developments and then followed by how we can also help in some of the security aspects related to our country. So satellite communication will be one of the major area in which Space Application Center is working. Apart from that, uh, the newly upcoming program related to satellite navigation also I will touch upon and what are the applications related to the SATCOM and SATNAV. Next. And this apart, optical and micro remote sensing have been these major work areas of space application center. So, we will be having a session related to that also. And to make it uh, apply to the societal applications, we need to generate various products. So, that will be covered under data products and remote sensing application, how it fits into the scheme of things related to societal applications as well as other science application which I will be talking about. And uh, to support all this uh, research as well as technology development activities, how SEC is, uh, has organized itself and what are the other support services related to testing, environmental testing, then to take care of quality aspect, that all also will be covered under my lecture. And uh, then I will just give you a brief about uh, what future holds for us as well as all of you which can give you an insight into some of the proposal which you can submit to our team uh, subsequently. So as you all know our space program which has been started by Dr. Vikram Sarabhai and uh, as I mentioned uh, we try to excel in all these activities and we and apply it for all the societal applications. So that is the major aim with which ISRO's uh, space program has been started way back in uh, late 60s. Next. Uh, this as the slide shows, ISRO is present almost everywhere in this country. So touching from the northern end to the southern end, even to Port Blair we have a earth station and a calibration site for supporting our activities and starting from waste where right now we are in Ahmedabad, Gandhinagar where we have uh, our space application center and even in a remote location like northeast area also we have a uh, center in what you call NESEC at Shillong. So and there are the various major centers uh, spread all over India so almost in all states we have a presence and wherever we do not have a full fledged center we have what we call a regional remote sensing centers also some of them which may be working under the state government's umbrella and they are also supporting many of the activities which uh, ISRO is supposed to carry out. They aid in that, we also help them a lot. So as you say, these uh, Indian Space Research Organizations uh, comes under the uh, central government, government of India, which uh, under Prime Minister, the uh, Minister of State will be the main person who will be uh, in charge of all the activities and uh, we have a Space Commission which uh, goes through all the project uh, discussions and approvals and once the project it is approved uh, the respective centers uh, carry out different projects under its umbrella and then as I mentioned we have uh, uh, five major centers one located in Ahmedabad then we have a, a Vikram Sarabhai Space Center at Trivandrum then another satellite is ISRO satellite center at Bangalore and then we have a national remote sensing center at Hyderabad. So these are and then we have liquid propulsion center which is again located at Valiamala in Trivandrum. Uh, it was in news some days back as all of you may be aware of for the development of cryogenic en engine which is an indigenous development and first time it has been utilized in one of our launcher program. So as you see we are spread all over the India and we have lot of activities to do and which we are supporting different ways supporting all the societal as well as science and other research applications. And then sometimes we also started Indian Institute of Space Science <coughs> and Technology where we try to have a <coughs> uh, what we call an academic program under which we have a four year uh, course being run uh, as a equivalent to an engineering degree in avionics as well as aerospace engineering as well as some uh, engineering sciences. So that is another way of supporting various academic activities as well. Next. Uh, as all of you are well aware of, uh, I need not emphasize much, ISRO's main activity as uh, all of you know, launchers, they have been in the re news regularly uh, and then we will be embarking on what we call a human space flight program where launcher will be one of the key element because we have to safely put uh, people in space. 
apart from that development of satellites or spacecraft that is one of the major activities for which uh, our isro satellite center bangalore is a lead center then space application center located at ahmedabad where we we all people work that is the main area where uh, applications are being developed and for development of ap application whatever technologies are required they are also being pursued there and this apart as i mentioned various societal application and support of government activities and india being a predominantly agriculture country and prone to many of the disasters uh, time and again so we have a disaster management or support system in place uh, with its uh, lead center being our national remote sensing center at hyderabad and then we carry out various research activities related to space as well as associated or related applications so that these are the major objectives with which isro has been working since long this is just a brief profile of our 12th fire plan uh, which has already completed almost 2 years from now we have around uh, 58 total missions including 30, uh, 33 satellites so as you see we uh, the activities are well spread out over the period of 5 years and uh, a lot of uh, new activities also are planned along with continuing some of the existing services so these are the major uh, thrust areas because continuing services is also very important so that is uh, continuing the programs which have been already launched and which are end of the life cycle of its uh, development these are being uh, substantiated by new developments where we try to enhance the capability of the service related to say satcom or satellite navigations or remote sensing next so as you see uh, last five year plan we had a total outlay of around 30883 crores uh, with 3000 crore being the annual budget plan for a particular year now in the next plan we have almost uh, increase of around uh, 30% so we will be having around 40000 crores rupee budget and uh, as you can see almost our annual budget has been double compared to the last five year plan so this gives you a idea of what the activities and the costs involved in these activities and the commensurate gains which are accruing to the society and the country out of these activities next this just to have a acquaintance with this is our space application center located at ahmedabad as i mentioned it is one of the major lead center related to technology development the electronics or payloads which go into the satellites so that is one of the major activities followed by all the applications and the associated activities related to bringing these applications to society we have one main campus located at satellite uh, ahmedabad and uh, then we have within the same campus we also have a development and educational communication unit which interacts and do social research and interacts with the people and interacts with various academic and other institutions as well to give feedback to our program so that we can fine tune all our activities based on this feedback apart from that we have a our station one located at ahmedabad and another one at delhi and apart from that a new campus has come up in bhopal this is again uh, around 7 kilometers away from our main campus and uh, these are uh, in fact are the major four activities and apart from that now we since uh, our activities are growing as you can see from the budget outlay which is being provided by government of india so we need to expand and for and take up very new activities related to as i mentioned about some planetary explorations as well as human space flight programs so and our existing programs are also evolving and getting enhanced every day so to take care of that we have got another a new campus as well next so this uh, shows our uh, images which has been generated by our cartosat 1 and 2 series of satellites so left hand side you have a a uh, false color composite of this image of our campus so this is what a 100 acre campus which is situated at satellite area and uh, on the right hand side is a bopal campus which is again as i mentioned located around 7 kilometers from the main campus and now around that we have got a new land around 39 acres so that will be developed in subsequent next 2 to 3 years uh, another uh, major research complex is coming up in this uh, particular area adjacent to our current bopal campus next uh, 
major activities most of things i covered as i mentioned design and development is our major activities related to communication satellites so whatever sensors or payloads go into the satellites they are being developed at uh, space application center ahmedabad and uh, the new program which has been started uh, three to four years back that is satellite navigation related sensor or payload development that also is a major activity and to support both this communication as, as well as navigation uh, payload development we need to have a corresponding infrastructure on ground which uh, where ground station can be utilized to receive and transmit signals which are received from satellite and uh, same way whatever navigation data which we receive from these uh, uh, navigation satellites they need to be processed in a handheld terminals like your mobiles and again that will give you the set uh, position and the uh, time instant so these all again developments are being carried out at space application center and apart from that as i mentioned the remote sensing program which is quite uh, matured a lot since last 25 to 30 years so related to optical as well as micro remote sensing whatever sensor development and associated technologies also are being developed at space application center and this apart uh, last couple of years we have taken up activities related to planetary interplanetary missions as well like chandrayaan and mars orbiter about which you'll be hearing in a separate talk next and uh, as i mentioned technology development or payload development is one part of our activities this is to be followed by associated once we put the satellite in orbit the data which is sent by the satellite they need to be processed on ground and then applied to the actual societal as well as science applications so for that whatever other activities required related to whether it is satcom or satnav or meteorology oceanography environment protection related activities na national natural resource survey management related activities and then in the field of tele education telemedicine as well as village resource center vrcs which have come up uh, through the efforts of our uh, development and education communication unit and as i mentioned about disaster monitoring related support activities also are being carried out at space application center and this apart uh, we also run what we call uh, under the aegis of uh, united nations a, a center for educating some of the uh, our peers in other countries like these uh, <coughs> asia pacific countries to support or uh, to have a education related to different fields related to say meteorology or communication or navigation we also conduct a short term nine months to one year uh, duration courses at uh, space application center in our bhopal campus next so this in summary is most of the activities which are carried out related to uh, sensor or the payload or technology development as i mentioned satcom satellites optical sensors microwave sensors and associated ground support activities related to that next and uh, the other part of this uh, technology that is applications uh, covering various uh, national re natural resource environment protection meteorology oceanography and disaster management these are the societal applications which are supported from sec next now coming to the first activity related to uh, satellite communication related developments uh, uh, having begun earlier in uh, late 70s we started with uh, what we call our insert one program in collaboration with uh, uh, us uh, agency and uh, Initially, we had uh, developed th these uh, system design and development related to INSAT-1 satellite which consisted of four satellites and the actual hardware fabrication was carried out it in USA and then our people got involved in testing and other activities and the program which has started in early uh, 70s, now it has matured enough and now we are developing our own satellite, everything is done built indigenously only some of the components are being utilized uh, which are procured from the foreign countries apart from that whole development designs uh, fabrication testing all activities are being carried out in space application center itself and uh, the corresponding satellites are developed at bangalore and so you can see the evolution of our uh, satellite communication activities in last 35 years next this is some of our recent uh, successes which are as you can see gsat 14 which has been launched very recently uh, through the launcher which had that cryogenic engine so that has been now 
put into orbit and the initial orbit testing or IoT testing is already underway and SETAIL will be soon be operationalized and uh, be provided for various activities. One of them activity related in this GSET 14 will be this uh, type of video conferencing or uh, satellite broadcast as well. And then, then we had recently a GSET 7 satellite which had uh, some of our strategic or security applications where communication in oceans was a real problem for uh, the people manning the our ocean waters and for that this satellite has been indigenously developed and it has gone a long way in easing various communication requirements of our strategic forces. Next. Then as I mentioned we had started with the satellite navigation programs uh, around five to six years back and we had two augmented uh, wide area augmentation for civil aviation related activities because as you all know GPS aided navigation is uh, currently prevalent internationally. To aid this, we have provided these two payloads on one, two of our satellites and this will go, go a long way in augmenting our uh, civil aviation related navigation services. So this is the total concept which has been indigenously developed the what we call a satellite based augmentation services for geo satellites. Next. And then we have come up with our own Indian regi regional uh, navigational satellite services which will consist of total seven satellite as has been shown here. It will be a constellation of seven satellite which will be always in operation in a what we call a geosynchronous as well as a geostationary orbits and they will be continuously providing this what we call PVT data, positional velocity and time data on your mobile or a terminal which are handheld terminals. So, and few, uh, there are plans to further, right now already one satellite has been launched last year and another one will be coming up soon. And then we will have a total constellation of 11 satellites will be there operating around 1500 kilometers around India. This, this satellite will be operational by 2015. So, this is how the total constellation will look like. Initially, it will be a 7 satellite configuration which will be augmented to 11 satellites. Next. Then coming to remote sensing, as I mentioned, we have two major components related to optical as well as microwave remote sensing. As its name suggests, they operate in different portion of your frequency spectrum. So that is why uh, they are segregated based on the frequency in which these signals operate. Next. So this is how there are two categories in both the optical as well as micro remote sensing. We have what we call passive sensors. Next. Where we have only a receive element is sitting in the satellite. So, you have an antenna or optics which will collect the information which has been due to the illumination of sun and this information is processed and various applications are derived out of that. Then we have active sensors next where additional part is the transmitter is added the in the as in the case of radar system as many of you may be aware of that is the radio detection and engine. Similarly, in optical we have what we call a lidar si system which also works on similar way having carrying its own source of illumination next. So, this is the saga of our 35 years of activities which have gone in space application center under ISRO's overall program, remote sensing program. So, we started in uh, late 70s, almost uh, 77, 78 was the first satellite which was launched related to this optical remote sensing and then we have almost the last 35 years we have come out with uh, multiple missions as you can see of various resolution as well as swath coverage. So, almost whole gamut of technology development has taken place in this field of optical remote sensing. Next. So, and today we have reached uh, capabilities where we can at a height from uh, 600 to 800 kilometers we can see even a small car moving on a road that can be detected using our optics which has been developed indigenously by the team at space application center in collaboration with other agencies. So, this is how our total evaluation has taken place as far as optical remote sensing is concerned. We can image now uh, objects as low size as 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 meters from a height of 600 to 800 kilometers. Next. This was our first satellite. Uh, recently, we completed 25 years of its uh, launch and it operated almost, it was designed to operate for uh, around 3 to 5 years, but it worked for almost 7 to 8 years. So, you can see the technology element which has gone into that and the quality of the work which was carried out at Space Application Center. So, this was our first satellite which which call a operational satellite. Although the activity started around 8 to 10 years back compared to the launch of this satellite, 
but uh, it took us eight to ten years to mature this technology and make it operational. Next, similarly, this is the latest one as I was mentioning, as where you can see object as low as 0.7 to 0.8 meters from this height. These are the sensors which have been developed under Cartosat series of our programs, and uh, even advanced versions also will be coming up in the uh, next couple of years. So you can see an uh, image of uh, this Vienna city in Austria, which has been captured with uh, great precision from by our Cartosat satellite. Next. Now coming to microwave remote sensing, this is how uh, you may be. <coughs> Surprised to know that our uh, micro remote sensing program also started almost at the same time as optical remote sensing program started. But uh, our first satellite was launched only in 2009, which we can see a truly operational satellite. So you may question why it has taken so long because the technologies involved in micro remote sensing are so different and so complex that it took almost uh, 15 years to master these technologies because nobody gives these technologies to you uh, or sells it. So you have to develop, uh, first you have to understand the technology elements related to that and then master this whole thing. So as you can see, starting with 78, almost in uh, 1998, we have launched our first what we call a radiometer. Again, that was a passive sensor. And in recently in 2012, we have, in 2009, we had what we call a wind scatterometer, which measures the wind velocity over oceans. And then a truly imaging satellite was launched only in 2012. So that again shows the total capabilities which have been mastered by our teams here at Space Application Center Ahmedabad and this is the total evaluation of micro remote sensing program and uh, again now further new missions have been planned up next. This is one of the latest satellites as I was men mentioning what we call a radar set, uh, radar imaging satellite which is a multi-mode space uh, synthetic aperture radar again from a height of 600 kilometers 536 to be exact. Uh, we can capture a object which is moving on ground uh, as low as around 1 meter or even less than that. So that is the capability of this radar sensor and the other major uh, characteristic is that this satellite can operate in day and night and in all weather conditions. The optical sensors have some limitations when there is rain or there is a night time it cannot operate. So to overcome this uh, limitations this radar is a solution which again so both the sensor will operate in a complementary manner to give uh, enhance our various requirements next these are some of the technology developments carried out for these radar imaging satellites and as i mentioned it was launched in 2012 parallel to this earlier we started with activities related to airborne sensors as well so many activities at space application centers also involve aircraft based sensors so this is one of the application which i am just showing to you related similar radar which has gone into this uh, satellite has been developed initially for airborne applications so you can wherever there is a flood or any other disaster you can fly this aircraft at a minimal notice so that is the advantage of this system of any airborne system and you can get images of again a very high resolution of even one meter or less next now coming to uh, remote sensing and uh, SATCOM, now we had last couple of years also started activities related to development of what we call uh, science missions. And one of the major science missions or planetary missions was the first one which was considered was this Chandrayaan-1 mission uh, which was launched in 2008 <coughs> and that it had been a great success as all of you are well aware of. It had many almost 10 to 11 payloads and three out of that the three major ones were developed at space application center Ahmedabad and uh, as you see it, it captured uh, very good images of the moon surface and lot of applications have come out of that and in fact uh, the one of the major achievement was the finding of uh, hydroxyl or water molecule on the surface of moon that the first time it has been conclusively proven that uh, there is a possibility of uh, ice water on the surface of moon. So the Chandrayaan one had gone a long way in proving this hypothesis. Next, and apart from that, it planted our Indian flag also. That we uh, there was a what we call a moon imaging probe, which was released from the satellite, and it landed on moon, and it had our Indian flag painted on it. Apart from that, now all of you are aware about very much well aware about this Mars orbiter mission. The Mars orbiter is on its way to Mars, and uh, on 22nd or 23rd September this year it will be 
uh, going into a mars orbit uh, my colleague minal will be covering this separately so i will not dwell upon it too much it had three sensors which have been developed at our space application center and each has different applications and one of the major activity is to finding out methane which can help us uh, know whether human beings or any uh, living organism can survive on mars in future or not next this is the orbit trajectory how this total mission was carried out uh, details minal will be covering in next presentation next so as you can see the total development related activities at sec related to all these th three major categories of communication navigation and earth observation and planetary missions we have already developed so many missions in the last couple of years some payloads or satellites are already developed and they will be soon launched once our launchers are ready so that is what we have been shown here so you can see last year we had 21 payloads delivered from space application center already other five are also been delivered to our bangalore center where it is being integrated with satellite next then we have uh, activity which are currently going on so related to some of the other 10 missions and then apart from that in next this year and next year we'll be developing almost other 92 sensors or payload activities related to all these three or four different types of missions next now as i mentioned launching satellite is the one part of the story the how to bring out application related to society that involves a lot of uh, signal or image processing so this is some of the uh, images which have been developed using the activities related to data processing are being shown here and this is for uh, various microwave as well as optical uh, data which are received from these satellites they are being processed on ground using uh, high-end computers as well as supercomputers and these images are generated many of these images are also generated in real time so as soon as data comes within no time these products have been generated and delivered to the users so that is one of the major again requirement the turnaround time of the product development that is also a crucial element say in case of disaster if the product doesn't reach in time then it has no meaning so th that's why the ground segment is also equally important that is what i'm trying to emphasize next these are again the products which have been developed at space application center using various radar as well as optical data next this is a synergy how as i mentioned optical operates in one region of frequency the microwave is using other microwave frequencies now how the signals or the images derived from both these uh, sensors can be merged together to generate various applications next so what was cloud cover area has been mapped by radars and how these products have been integrated that is being shown here then setcom application is all of you are aware of it is all prevalent in all our day-to-day -day life you, communication is as you all know major requirement and satellites are going in a long way in helping all the activities apart from that we have what we call EduSat satellite launch specifically for tele-education as well as telemedicine related applications and in future we will be going for human space program so for that technology development has also started as you know when you put somebody or a human being in a space it should have almost 100 percent communication availability otherwise you will not know what is happening in space so that is one of the major requirement and to achieve that 100 percent goal that needs a lot of technology development on the earth related to that so for that space application sector is already working on that next these are some of the application or the technologies which can be developed to fulfill all these communication requirements next then as i mentioned navigation is coming in a big way now we will have apart from communication is as i mentioned well pervasive in all our day-to-day -day life and now that will be augmented as you all know gps receivers are there everywhere whether it is in your handle terminal or in your car or whether it is an aircraft or any other mobile platforms so now we are developing various uh, as i mentioned indian regional national satellite service configuration so that will support all these uh, various satellite navigation related applications and the basic f future idea is to merge setcom as well as navigation applications so on your mobile you will get information not you can not only communicate it with all your friends or colleagues but you will also get information related to your position and everything so you don't have to carry a separate receiver for uh, getting this pvt information so that is the idea with which our center is working for our future work next and these are the remote sensing application as i already mentioned related to land 
forest agriculture india being a predominantly agriculture country that it has a major applications then forest cover as you all know it is dwindling so to find out the extent of uh, damage done to forest environment all these activities have been supported by both our optical as a micro sensors and apart from that science applications we have high end what we call strategic or security application where this data which are already anyway available from our satellites can be ut utilized in case of exigencies to support our other strategic needs as well next so these are the various applications i will not dwell too much on that mostly agriculture is the prime aim with which all our remote sensing program has been started and we are continuously supporting all these activities whether it is optical remote sensing or micro remote sensing next so these are some of the application in earthquake how this post earthquake uh, assessment related to disaster for that activities how we can utilize remote sensing data is shown here next similarly crop forecasting as you all know planning for planning commission to come out with proper allocations and taking mitigation uh, steps what we know is forecasting of how, how the crops are going to our curry for ravi crops how they are going to be there for the current forecast for the current year or next year so all these activities can be carried out using remote sensing data and it is being regularly done a center has been set up at new delhi also which is supported by isro activities next then we have what we call as you all know atmospheric and meteorology applications that is one of the major area and recently isro has launched insert 3d satellite with the advanced sensor which can be utilized for various weather forecasting and disaster warning application next then we had a we also work collaborative with other foreign countries as well so we have a indo french collaboration what we call megatropics which had various sensors one of the sensor was uh, uh, developed in jointly with the french team and it is not that everywhere isro has got success only this is one of the classic case where we jointly this satellite was developed and one of the sensors developed some problem after one year so that we are also learning from all our other uh, failures what we encounter so this was one of the satellite where we had what we call a radiometer payload which was a very useful in say tracking the cyclones and other activities related to winds but now uh, last couple of months it has been dysfunctional due to some problems which has developed next then as you all know glaciers are also receding so to find out the extent of damage to glaciers what is the current situation related to glacier then origin of some of the rivers all these activities also being supported by various remote sensing uh, data which are received from all these satellite next next this can skip then disaster management already i have covered whether it is floods floods is a major disaster which are supported by remote sensing data apart from that post earthquake disaster monitoring and other activities for assessment of the damage that will go it gets feed into the various uh, our planners whether it is at district level or taluka level so for that activities also isro has been supporting and space application center has been one of the major center related to that next now coming to science and space exploration as i have already covered chandrayaan 1 mission was a great success and now we have planned a chandrayaan 2 mission next and then to support all this activity as i mentioned these uh, the quality of the work which is being carried out at our space application center that is also a major thrust behind all these successes and uh, we have developed various facilities in our center which support this uh, high quality or what you call high fidelity related uh, requirements and uh, it is a independent team which always designers whatever they design they are being uh, critically examined by this team and then only uh, once the clearance obtained then only actual fabrication or development work starts next and apart from that we have various support fa facilities various facilities which are related to microwave uh, circuit fabrication or electronics uh, Uh, circuit fabrications then we have various environmental test chambers for uh, hot and cold testing or whether it is testing of thermo vacuum condition because this in space you have temperature as well as vacuum related issues so all these things are being simulated on ground and tested all the electronics goes through undergoes all the detailed testing for starting from 3 days to almost 10 days and at various it passes through various stages then vibration is one of the major a phenomena which is observed during launch so to take whether the electronics will 
can sustain this vibration that also being tested so for that all this test facilities are developed at our main center and now the new facilities are coming up at the new land which is will be which we have acquired at bopal campus next so these are the some of the facilities which have been already developed apart from that high end computing machines also are there next and to support all these activities we have a very advanced library as a very all the research material as well as study material is available online to all the users who are enrolled there and in fact from ho home also we can access many of these uh, document which are available now in a e form as electronic resources next then as i mentioned we have a development and educational communication unit which uh, gets into touch with the actual society people and gets feedback a very useful feedback for all of us so that how our if there is a lacuna in some of our developments we can correct that in some of our next mission so for that we have a social research group also and apart from that next various activities related to tele education tele medicine and village resource center where on the click of that terminal you can get all the details related to your crops or other agriculture or other uh, activities next this apart uh, we also have outreach program apart from uh, we have a, a permanent exhibition which is now under renovation and we will be expanding these activities as well we have various technology transfer related activities then th this respond that is the sponsored research program is one of the major outreach activities which for which we are here today next and then to support all these activities as i have already mentioned we have developed various infrastructures and these three courses which are being conducted at our bopal campus for asia pacific countries and various short term courses are also being run apart from that various seminars and workshops are conducted regularly throughout the year with the support of our space application center and other isro centers as well next next and to support all this activity uh, administration and other construction and other activities we have uh, well established infrastructure at our space application center next as far as future is concerned as you can see we will be going for a very high resolution camera systems as far as our op optical remote sensing is concerned and uh, we will be having a orbiter as well as lander mission on chandrayaan 2 mars mission is already on its way to mars and then there will be follow up missions related then apart from that to support our ongoing programs related to agriculture and forestry resources series of satellites will be continuing and then we have for climatic and meteorological application we have our what we call uh, insect 3d and its uh, follow on programs next as far as microwave remote sensing is concerned after the launch of our first uh, synthetic aperture radar there are plans to develop radars in various other frequency bands as well Uh, whether it is l band or x band and they will have various strategic value as well so many of these satellites are already planned and in the various development stages and apart from that one of the major one is this wind scatterometer which provides a uh, wind information or wind vector information which feeds into the various meteorological model related to weather forecasting so because the wind is a very important element and you may be wondering because tropical climate is very difficult to be predicted that's why uh, many of our prediction go wrong you may be seeing in usa or europe when they announce that it will be raining it always rains but here in our case it is not that easy to predict so to support all these activities various programs are already underway next next now going to chandra and to i will just briefly show what new developments we are carrying out next apart from now we'll be having our own sensor and one of the major activity is related to this lander which will be having a what we call a soft landing in the earlier chandrayaan one as i mentioned we had what we call hard landing where uh, our indian flag or the camera was just released from the satellite here unlike that we'll have a soft landing system where a lander will land on the moon surface and then we'll have a rover which will come out of the next next so once the lander lands on uh, appropriate area on moon surface and the rover will next rover will be coming out of this lander and for 15 to 20 days it will be doing various experimentation around uh, area of around 1 to 2 kilometers so it can move around that areas so as you can say we are 
fulfilling the vision which has been envisioned by uh, late Vikram Sarabhai. But some of you may be questioning, that question may come, why we are going to moon or Mars nowadays? Because that was not the original idea with which Dr. Vikram Sarabhai started this program. But as Mahatma Gandhi ji has already said, the future depends on what we do in the present. So we have to catch up with other countries. India, if it, India has to become a superpower or a, a developed country, we have to master all this technology which nobody gives you on th uh, off the hand. So all these developments are a prelude to all to achieving that strategic importance as well. Next. So both the activities are required. We are anyway into societal application, but science and strategy is also very important if India is to gain its, uh, as you say, a rightful place in this committee of nations. Next. And as somebody has said, the day is not far when we'll be honeymooning on the moon or even pizza restaurants will be there on moon. So, <coughs> next. So, to summarize, we have a very vigilant eyes in the skies and Space Application Center is supporting all these activities related to whether it is SATCOM or satellite navigation or remote sensing. And uh, future is also very encouraging. We have a lot of challenging tasks to do to support our science and security applications. Mars Orbiter mission is, is already on the way and we are eagerly looking for its Mars injection because that will be the major activity of importance. And then Chandrayaan to soft landing will be another major uh, strategic or technology development which we'll be doing and operationalizing this navigational satellite constellation because then we'll, we'll be independent of this GPS system where it is under the control of some other country. So, with this, I thank all of you for your attention as well as Director Sec, uh, Dr. Kiran Kumar, who has recently got Padma Sri, and our ISRO Chairman, Dr. Radha Krishnan, who has been awarded Padma Bhushan. So, and we thank SPFU also for organizing this activity, and BISEC for providing all the support, and all of you participants. Thanks.